Hi, in this video I'm going to look at the taper. And you may have heard that term being used in the press and on TV, and you're probably going to hear more of it over the next few months. So it's a good time to look at what the taper actually is. And it kind of follows on from my last video, which was on quantitative easing, or also known as QE. So as a very quick uh, recap on QE, that's when the Bank of England in the UK creates new money and goes and buys some government bonds. And QE's also happened in the US, pretty similar to the UK. The US central bank, the Federal Reserve, has created dollars, and it's gone out and bought US government bonds. And slight difference from the UK, it's also gone and bought some mortgage-backed bonds, mortgage-backed securities. So, as I say, very similar to what's been happening in the UK, but another difference is that in the UK, the Bank of England has actually stopped buying fresh bonds. Whereas in the US, over the last year, the Fed has carried on buying $85 billion worth of bonds every month. A lot of bonds. So, what's the taper? Well, pretty simple really. The Fed has decided to cut its monthly spend from $85 billion to $75 billion a month. So a pretty modest cut. So why on earth is it a big deal? Well, I think the main reason is what happened last summer when we had what became known as taper talk. So basically, uh, the head of the Federal Reserve last summer was called Ben Bernanke, and he made a speech in which he hinted that he was going to start cutting back on those bond purchases, starting the taper. That spooked investors, it spooked markets. We saw some quite big falls, quite a lot of volatility. And it was quite a worrying time, well, a fairly worrying time, shall we say, for investors. And Bernanke quickly rode back. He said, He's not, he wasn't about to do the taper, and that actually his comments had kind of been misinterpreted. Six months later, the Fed in December finally starts to do the taper, do the taper for real. And what's interesting is this time round, it's not been a problem. No crisis. Slightly fewer bonds are being bought and the markets aren't bothered. So that's quite significant. I think that's been the case for two reasons. One, investors have had six months to get used to the idea of the taper. They've begun to understand better that it's not that significant. And secondly, I think we've also seen more signs of a US recovery. And we've also seen American politicians sit down and conclude a budget agreement, at least for the short term. So that's increased a feeling of stability and a feeling of optimism. And people are saying, well, this kind of modest cut in bond purchases is not a big deal. Uh, and let's remember, you know, by cutting these bond purchases, the Fed isn't actually tightening monetary policy. It's still buying more bonds. Its holdings of bonds is rising. All that's changing is it's slowing down the pace at which it loosens monetary policy. So it's not a major problem. There's still going to be more money coming out, and that should sustain share prices for the next few months in the US, all being well. So the next question, I guess, is, well, what about the rest of the year? Are we going to see more tapering? When is QE going to end? When is the US government, when is the Fed rather, going to stop buying new bonds? Well, I don't know for sure, but my best guess is that we'll see an end to bond purchases this year. And the Fed has said it will consider further ta tapering when unemployment falls to 6.5%. Let's be clear though, the Fed isn't saying that when unemployment falls to 6.5%, it will definitely do some more tapering. It's saying it will do some, consider some more tapering when unemployment falls to that rate. And I think the big thing to look out for here is inflation and indeed deflation. What's interesting over the last two or three months is we're seeing inflation across the developed world really beginning to fall now. And just we're beginning to see some signs that maybe, possibly, 
deflation could be something in the near future. That's when consumer prices across the economy fall. Now, economists, central bankers, governments hate deflation. So if they think deflation is a serious prospect, you can bet your bottom dollar there won't be any further tapering. And indeed, actually, purchases of bonds might go up again. But it's hard to know. My best guess is still that deflation won't become a serious worry in the US, and we will see further tapering and an end to bond purchases this year. Now, that's all very well. Stopping the purchases is clearly a big moment, will be a big watershed in this whole story of QE. But there are all these extra bonds that the US Fed has bought over the last few years. And it's when the Fed decides to get rid of those bonds that we're going to see the true winding up of QE in the US. And I think that's going to be a worrying time. We're really going to be in uncharted territory. We've not been in a situation before where the Fed is flogging off a load of government bonds. So that could create more volatility and consequences that people really haven't thought of yet. So that's something to bear in mind, a bit worrying, something for 2015 and further out. But in the short term, I think we can be reasonably optimistic. There'll be further tapering this year in 2014, but it probably won't spook stock markets because there's still all that money out there that has supported share prices over the last couple of years. So that's it for today's video. I'll be back next week with another one. Until then, good luck with your investing.